Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to another YouTube video. In today's video, we're going to be looking at part two of our VPS series, where I'm just going to go through a couple of things, some of the common issues when you first get your VPS up and running, um, as well as some of the things to be aware of. Now, what I am going to do in this video is going to be running you through uh, accessing the VPS. Obviously, we've got slightly different um, kind of process for doing so, uh, but again, it's down to the enhanced security that our VPS provide. We we do allow for you guys to access it via either VNC, Remote Connect or really anything, it's just you have to do it a very specific way. So pretty much when you first get your VPS, uh, you'll have access to our CQ Server's VPS panel here. You can press List VPS and you'll be to this area right here. Now if I want to manage this VPS, I'll press Manage. Now this gives me an overview, including the IP address. Um, so you'll see the IP address right here for your VPS. You'll see it's installed with Windows 2019 and you will not be able to view the password here. Now the password will have been emailed to you, but also when you've ordered, you will have set the password up. So, I mean, I would, I would kind of expect that you would kind of know what it is. If you do not know what it is, you can simply just reset it uh, by going down here. You can go to settings, change password, set up a new password there, change password and then restart the machine. Otherwise, if that doesn't work, now because this is Windows, it's not always going to work, what I would advise you to do is press install, go to Windows 2019, select reinstall OS, Windows 2019, new password, and set up your uh, password there. Now you can change the OS for your VPS at any time, just please be aware it will wipe the files when you do so. You can install control panels such as cPanel, Plisk, Buzo, Webman, Interworks, ISP Config 3, CentOS, or Vesta CP. Again, your more popular ones with cPanel, Plesk, and um, things like that. And we, we actually have access to a rescue mode, so you can boot basically just a small, uh, a small Linux environment in case you want to do, um, basically you need to rescue the primary Linux VPS, or if you wanted to do like drive partitions or anything like that. Uh, you need to put a password in, then enable it. It'll enable it, it'll allow you to access. You can view a task here, showing you when you've changed all the but you've changed the password, everything you've done, um, and this can be shown for all your users. Um, and then everything else through here. You can change your host name. Again, it's up to yourself. I've not bothered doing it on this one, um, but if you do want to, you can. You can change ISOs and things through here as well. SSH keys, um, you'd add an SSH key to your account up here add this SSH key and then you can actually apply it to each of the servers you own, it'll automatically add it in. Again on a Windows VPS I don't know how useful that'll be but you know if you're using a Linux uh, you know Ubuntu and like that it's a little bit better. And you can also view performance graphs in terms of bandwidth and your system statistics so uh, your CPU utilization uh, this probably won't have a great um, amount of it but at the moment you'll be able to see it's powered by AMD um, as well as you'll kind of see you know what it's um, what it's running at, at the moment, and I don't know what the hell that's saying, but uh, but yeah. So you can see that you're using eight percent of the CPU. Yeah, you've got access to your RAM here, things like that. Now, one of the really common things we get when you're trying to connect to a VPS um, is, of course, it, it's not allowing you to. So I'm going to go through the complete process of how you're going to connect to your VPS, what you're going to be required to do uh, in terms of what you know, apps you're going to need to use or what's actually required to get you in. Um, if there's a Windows VPS, uh, this will be covered in this tutorial, Ubuntu. Again, there's nothing different, so I would just advise doing it through uh, your favourite kind of um, way to access shell. I use Putty because I'm old fashioned. Um, I'll, I'll, that's a lie, I use MT Putty. Um, but you can, you can simply use the command prompt on your PC if you really want to. So what we are going to do, first of all, um, I'm going to flip over to another tab where I'm going to show you what we're going to need to do to access this Windows VPS. Hello. So, um, we have now flipped over to my other tab where what we're going to be doing, um, I'm just going to show you kind of what is going to be required for you. So, in order to launch our VPSs, you cannot use the standard remote desktop connection, this. You can't use it. You need to use this one. So, what you're going to do, you're going to go to search in the App Store, type in remote desktop, it'll bring up something like this, you're going to load it up and all you're going to do is press uh, install, wait for it to download and launch. Um, again, it's compatible with most uh, most PCs, it's only Windows 10 um, and again, you know, you shouldn't have any issues. If you do have an issue with this, 
uh, then by all means let us know. Um, we'll, we'll try our best to kind of help you out, but we've not had anyone who's had issues with it yet. What we'll do, press launch. It's going to launch the app, and the app will look like this. Now, the really good thing about this compared to your other windows allows you to multi-tab, so you can actually have multiple tabs of remote desktop kind of enabled it's very good I, I really really like it um, as long as you set up the permissions and stuff for the app correctly it allows you to copy and paste and stuff just the same as your other remote desktop does so we're going to just press add pcs now we are going to need the ip from our vps now this is my ip now user account we're going to press add the username for a new vps is always going to be administrator and the password i'm just going to paste it in now, what we are going to do from there, display name, you don't need to worry about that for now. We're going to press save. We're just going to now press save again. We're going to wait a minute or two and we're going to press this. It's going to say untrusted certificate, we're just going to press connect anyway. And as you'll see, it's going to load us in and we're now in our Windows Server VPS. So when you first load in, you're going to be loaded in here. Now, a couple of the quick the things that people miss out on straight away, when you go into Internet Explorer here, you are going to have all sorts of um, stuff set up with Internet Explorer enhanced security configurations enabled. So, what you would need to do, first of all, is you're going to select your local server. Now, you'll see here, there's a couple of things around. Now, we're going to need to see where it says IE enhanced security configuration. Select it, put it as off and off, press OK. That's then going to disable this, at least it should, hopefully. Yeah, it's just not updating. Um, effectively, what we'll need, to, so that's just disabled it. So if you want to go and download Chrome and stuff now, you can. Um, it's not enabled yet, so you can download Chrome if you'd like to. Um, a remote desktop, I'd always say enable it. If you don't plan on using remote desktop and you want to disable it for security purposes, feel free. But again, if you want to re-enable this, you'll be able to do that through your um, through your ma your server manager. Now, what we would, what I would always do if you're using this for 5M, um, first of all, I would just close out this. You won't need it. There's going to be a command down in the comments, which is going to allow you to access your VPS uh, very very easily um, in terms of getting it set up for 5M. What I'm going to do now, I'm just going to uh, kind of quickly show you how to run the command. This will allow you to install 5M quick and easy um, and just be a kind of updated version of doing so. Um, we are just going to go to the Windows button down here, making sure we're going to the Windows and the VPS and not our own one. We're going to go to Windows PowerShell. We're just going to paste in this command. I'll leave this in the comments. It's basically just an install for a couple of useful things in the VPS. It's then going to install 5M. After it's done 5M, it's going to install uh, Google Chrome and configure it so that you can just get Google Chrome set up. The reason I'm saying that is because Internet Explorer is what's, what comes by default on your Windows Server 2019. I, I wouldn't recommend it. It's not very fun. Running this command is just going to download the 5M files, it get the VPS up and running for you in terms of it's going to, you know, modify the firewall rules for 5M to allow it to um, accept traffic. Now, what I would say if you're using this for 5M, contact us and let us know. Um, just you can make a ticket and we can actually enable a, win a, a, a firewall rule that will specifically allow traffic for 5M. This will allow you to fully have access to, um, you know, the full extent of uh, your 5M server been protected by our four terabytes plus DDoS protection network. Um, you will still be protected if you don't do this, but again, it's better because it'll just ultimately limit the packets a lot more. Um, and yeah, we also we have access to A2S caching as well as port punching um, through the PATH network for all CQ server VPSs. Now, there's a couple of points I just want to go over with you. Um, there is cases where occasionally what will happen is this, uh, the server will provision but it'll actually provision, oh, that's not what we wanted to do. It'll actually provision with this as disabled and this is disabled. So if that is the case, all you're going to need to do um, is simply, uh, I'll just disconnect here. We're going to go to our VPS here. 
I'm going to go to VNC. Now this is like effectively like a KVM into the machine, so it's a physical connection. Now, in order to do the control alt delete, you'll press the buttons over here. You'll go to buttons and control alt delete. Now that'll send the control alt delete command. Now this will be very slow. This is not how we expect you to use this. VNC is slow because it effectively is just a glorified, um, you know, visual screen to the to the VPS. You'll then need to manually enter your password. It will not allow you to copy and paste it. We're then going to press the button here. Now this will log us in, even if this is disabled, we can do that. It will kick you out of your other session if you are logged in, but we can simply go on and enable that. Um, now this is a case of if anything ever goes wrong, check if it works via KVM and can I alter your settings through here. It will it will really allow you to, to fix most things um, to do with the VPS. Now that's the main kind of things I've covered there uh, in terms of accessing the VPS, being able to reinstall the OS, all the things like that. Uh, your password and details for the VPS are provided by an email when you first purchase. And if there is any issues, as always, we are available via ticket. Uh, live chat, but again, I'd, if you are going to go through live chat, I'd just recommend joining our Discord and sending us a message there. And, and via Discord 24-7 as well. Um, what I do, I, again, I do stress that this is a kind of a service for for those who do understand what they're doing with a VPS and I wouldn't recommend if you're new to a VPS and you want a quick setup for 5M I I wouldn't recommend you know just going ahead and, and going all in on a VPS. Uh, VPSs are awesome and, and they ultimately do provide a better service than a game server but if you do not know what you're doing it, it can be quite stressful to learn. If you're not willing to learn yourself don't expect other people to do it for you. I would just recommend uh, go with a game server because uh, it will be a lot more simple for you. Uh, but again, once you've got this all set up, a VPS runs exactly as a game server, just it'll run you know, a hell of a lot smoother because you'll have dedicated resources. With a VPS, you pretty much get what, what you pay for um, and you'll also have access to a lot more kind of network and firewall style. Uh, rules on your server. Um, another benefit of the VPS is that you can host uh, your TeamSpeak uh, and Discord bots and things like that on the same VPS, your 5M server. Um, and, and again, that's the kind of benefits. So other than that, guys, thank you so much for watching. If there's anything else you want me to pick up on, just uh, you know, drop a comment. By all means, I will absolutely do what I can to cover ending off. Um, and as always, thanks for your time. Enjoy the rest of your day.